Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Uh, here we are on uh, middle of August, uh, getting toward the, toward the end of August, actually. And this will air supposedly on a Monday if we get everything right. <laughs> Monday, August 22nd, if we've August got our calendars right. 22nd. Right? <laughs> and uh, man, it's going. And uh, August is, uh, you know, we tape ahead of the time. August is a interesting month uh, for all of us. And uh, I know you got a few things uh, going on in the next week or two. What What are you doing uh we're taping a little bit before that, so what are you doing? I think you're you're off next week doing something, right? We are, yes. We are in Ireland August 9th to the 16th. So that is, as we're taping this, this is just a few days away. So we are counting down to that trip, excited for that. But then when this airs, another super, super exciting piece of news. Um, this will air August 22nd, if we're right on our calculations. <laughs> and by August 26th, my son Josh and his wife Emily will officially be moving from Delaware back to New Hampshire. Mm. So we are super, super excited about that. And then in the midst of all of this, Ireland, them moving back, Caleb moves back to Gordon into his dorm, and Labor Day weekend, Anna moves um, down to Boston for Emmanuel College. So just lots of lots of exciting activity going on around here uh we're enjoying every minute of it yep yep and the covenant uh as we've tried to explain it um and uh, uh there'll be a, a session we just taped with bob and carrie rockwell is that they pretty much explain <laughs> explain the covenant is uh the life is real mm-hmm. uh not absent of trouble not absent of difficulty and uh but it's in the middle of all that, in a very tough place, in a very wicked world, surrounded by self-centered people, uh, that God gives us this place of, of uh, e- excitement and supernatural mm-hmm. work, and I'll resolve things, and watch me what I'm about ready to do. And in the middle of that, that's why when we call blessing, um, we don't limit it to just you know financial, which most people do. It's it's all the elements of life, you know, like you're experiencing with well, my kids get to be around and I get to have my daughter nearby with, with college and uh, we have fellowship together. We take trips together and mm-hmm. um, it's it's the life that God says, let me give it to you. And, and it's always unique to us. So there's not a set pattern is like, well, you know, people can say, well, you know, Kathy, you and Rich, you know you have families that are believers and uh, it seems it seems easy which by the way it isn't completely easy because <laughs> they're they're still adults and they still you know have thoughts about uh, different things but um it's not about that it's about given what you are facing including mm-hmm. even adult children that are struggling with even being around you or they're they have conflict or or manipulation god says i can give it to you anyway Mm-hmm. Um, and let me give it to you. And one thing, and I'd just like to say this, is that, and I've seen this over and over and over again. First of all, families are dysfunctional uh, right. per, per se. Because why? Well, it's... it's we live it, in a broken world. We live in a There's broken a world. <laughs> and uh, people are self-centered. Mm-hmm. And they cause, dis, you know, we, what we talk about is chaos. They, talk, they, they cause disruption. And again, as we look at it, if it was me, I would like it to look like this. Mm-hmm. And but a dysfunctional family, it doesn't really look like that. And I've got right. conflict and, and manipulation, and all, and I will and I won't. And if you do, and or this, and and so it's a struggle uh, with kids that are uh, promised certain things and they don't deliver. They they uh, want you to do certain things, and then hey, I'll I'll give it back to you, and then they don't, and. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on, but here's what's cool: uh, is that God says um, uh, fellowship mm-hmm. is really, really important. Yes. Um, 
And ideally, first of all, between you and your spouse, um, I am calling you to become one. And if you're believers, um, I would like, God says, I'd like to lead you into that no matter what you've been through. Uh, right. So in our, in our retreats, usually couples that are coming are struggling of some level just because they've learned the way of the world which mm-hmm. is, um, I want you to, or I want to change you, or I want you to act a certain way, or I want you to follow what I want. And now there's argument and, and disagreement going on. Uh, and they've learned how to maneuver that of, of either give, c- caving in by, you know, just, okay, whatever, or fighting it through it, mm-hmm. uh, or negotiating it, you know. And, and so God says, well, the two of you are called to this beautiful place of oneness and walking with me in agreement with the Holy Spirit and the will of, of God speaking, and I can, it's a beautiful place. Um, mm-hmm. You know, come and learn that, which we teach in the abiding, we teach in the following courses. Then next to that would be ideally your children, grandchildren, sisters, brothers, parents uh, actually have a thriving family mm-hmm. that enjoys being together. Um, right. And by the way, there's a, uh, a cultural thing with that. I, and this is, remember, this is God's ideal, uh, is um, children learn respect and honor in a scenario where there are adults who live in respect and honor. Absolutely. Uh, and they learn More social. More is caught than taught all yeah, the time. And, they, <laughs> and, they, and they, uh, they learn social graces and how to listen. And respond mm-hmm. and discuss and talk and share and if there's a freedom to, and this is really particularly cool with children if there's a freedom the way that they think and say and and express is is really beautiful uh, mm-hmm. because they're just so fresh they're, they're not burdened by even restricting they just well here's what I here's what they say right and they and literally and there was a show called you know kids say the funniest things is <laughs> they, they truly do uh, mm-hmm. Because they just they they the way that they put things together, is just it's just fun. But uh, there's a learning, uh, ultimately of respect, and there's authority. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as we we help them grow, we transfer that authority from the parent to God, mm-hmm. and they learn to follow God in a healthy way. And then they develop their extended family with their new spouses and, and uh, et cetera, and their own children as well as we join them. So it's, it's, a, it's meant to be, the social fabric was always intended, and this is all the way through history, uh, the family mm-hmm. uh, and the extended family uh, right. because the, the grandparents have a role and the siblings have a role and the cousins have a role. Um, and is it, is it free of conflict? No. Mm-hmm. Because why? Well, we're, they're self-centered, sinful nature, and you got to deal with it. You got to learn forgiveness. You got to learn process. You got to learn to uh, work through that. Um, and then beyond that, you know, would be the church, the church body. Uh, and there's all kinds of problems with that, because right. again, there's self-centeredness of uh, manipulation at the top, even in, in the church leadership, all the way down to people in the church. Uh, but all can be places that God uses those relationships to refine and to sanctify us, to purify us. Yeah, um, and then, um, but fellowship, uh, as we think of covenant, and you and you get to experience that because you're going to go on a trip in that fellowship, um, mm-hmm. and that's a picture of what it looks like. Is uh, God says if your family is dysfunctional because not because of what you're doing, and by the way, maybe mm-hmm. we've contributed to it in the past. But right. now, we're, now we're learning, oh, you know what? I don't need to take on these heavy burdens and I don't need to be in conflict and I don't need to be in unforgiveness, but I still have dysfunction. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, God says, uh, they have choices to make. You can't force them. Interesting enough, you, and, and, and think about the beauty of fellowship with God is he says, you can never force fellowship. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a choice of respect, honor, and process to seek God's best together, ideally. He said, so when there's dysfunction, he said, what I will bring around you is another form of family. And that other form of family is what we call, what you and I have been calling inner circle, Mm -hmm. a small group. People that are uh, now 
in sweet fellowship with you. Again, not absent of conflict, not absent of disagreement, right. but we, we have a heart for each other. We don't judge each other. We process each other, and we're encouraging each other to seek God's will and mm-hmm. receive wisdom and to walk and abide with God. And then this is what's cool. If that happens in mm-hmm. the spiritual family, and, and Bob and Carrie express this if you have a chance to listen to theirs, is they then are living covenant life. And mm-hmm. when you're living covenant life together, guess what? I'm blessing you, which is what we're talking about here, to become a blessing. Right. And you start giving it away. And now they have a spiritual family around them. Mm-hmm. And they're part of our larger spiritual family that is what, what we, we would call our grandchildren that is, isn't dysfunctional at all. Is it, is it perfect? No. Uh, right. But is it sweet? Yes. And God says, I can bring you that anyway. Mm-hmm. If your own personal family stays dysfunctional and isn't willing to receive the beauty of what I have to offer you. And, and the truth right. is, therefore, no matter what we're at, even if we're starting that today, like, okay, I'm, I'm beginning to learn that, and I don't have any inner circle. Mm-hmm. Well, ask God to process that with you. See who people would come around you. Uh, start respecting them and bring, bring people into that place and now start to invite them to walk with you and you walk with them. And pretty soon you have a new family. Um, right. And that family is sweet. And, that, and that's what we're trying to encourage people with, that the blessing of God, the covenant blessing is... You know, the way I look at it is um, I'm in a joyful relationship with God, hearing from mm-hmm. God, walking with God, the adventure of God, the seeing the supernatural of God. Uh, financially, there's a freedom to us, and he gets mm-hmm. us to that place. And I'm not talking about wealthy. I'm saying that he'll get you to a freedom so that you're not burdened by money. Um, and that means provision, show you how to spend the money properly, how to save, you know, those kind of things. Right. Uh, tithing is all a part of that. And then and then a, a uh, fellowship that is sweet, enjoyable, and fun to be with, and you do things together. Ideally, that includes mm-hmm. your, your family. Uh, like you, right. get, you get to, you get to go on a trip, and you'll be in sweet fellowship with the exciting prospect of, of seeing Ireland together. Yes, yes, uh, and, and building those memories. And you'll have, think of the two levels of memory you'll have. And we, we've had this all our whole life, and we learned this. Linda and I learned this really early, and so our kids and grandkids, which are part of our family, they get to be the recipients of this, and it's true. Uh, there's two elements of memory. The, the place, because mm-hmm. it's unique and different. Uh, it's not just at your lo- local house. You're right. traveling. You're going to travel to Ireland, and the whole thing is unique, different, and completely opposite of mm-hmm. what we what you, we're used to. And there's a specialness to that. Absolutely. And then two, you get to do it together. Mm-hmm. And it's those things that happen, which is, I'm going to be excited about. To, which will when, be the silly when you come fun back. stories. Yeah. The, the <laughs> silly, fun, exciting, interesting stories mm-hmm. that you experience together particularly in, in what we do, and I know you do too, is that we don't take a vacation from God. We actually go deeper. This is the time to press in. We yes. actually go deeper and we spend time praying and discussing and what do you think is God's will and what are the issues of your life that you want us to pray for and mm-hmm. see. And God speaks to us and we have a great time with that. So um, you then experience this great uh, experience of memory. And when you'll come back, it'll be, that blessing will continue because Absolutely. your family will talk about it, refer to it, and get influenced by it, um, and you're experiencing the blessing of life. So that when we talk about covenant, um, it's not limited to just a, a financial thing or a material thing. Mm-hmm. It's all these elements of life that God says, um, I can give it to you even if pieces of your current life mm-hmm. are not very healthy. Right. He said, that's okay. I can resolve it for you, you know, and so it'll be fun. And we've talked about, um, like you're going to do, this aspect of fortification, um, that when things are going pretty well Mm -hmm. and things are are enjoyable and you're not really faced with any, let's say, uh, big, big, big uh, problems in life or issues in life and 
and we go through seasons like that uh, that it doesn't mean we're not going to have them or they're not we still don't have some difficulty but he says uh, and, and we talked about with uh, Asa that while they had peace you know no no battles they strengthened to get ready for battle. Right. This was the time to fortify. Uh, they built yeah. cities. They, beat, they built uh, walls. They built uh, stronger places. Uh, we've talked about Nehemiah and uh, uh, the aspect of, of strengthening that place in order to function. Uh, we talked about Paul who said, if you're going to build, mm-hmm. let God direct it. Let him be the master architect, the master builder. You just show up to work and let him direct you and build on his foundation so that mm-hmm. even when we say, okay, yes, I want to fortify, it doesn't mean I'm going to go do something. It's rather I'm going to listen and let him guide me into, okay, what would you have me do to strengthen and fortify? Uh, so it's an important aspect uh, to build fortification, strengthen up. Uh, let's, let's add to that now Ephesians 4, uh, 11 through 16. This is another statement about building and what that looks like, Ephesians four eleven to 16, which actually flows into our concept of fellowship. Sure. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and from, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the coming craftiness and deceitful plotting, but speaking truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Yep. Um. Well, first of all, um, you know, he's talking that uh, the goal of each other, again, this is talking about fellowship mm-hmm. and the giftedness that we receive uh, in verse 12 is for the equipping of the saints. Mm-hmm. Interesting enough, and there's two elements of that, uh, the work of ministry mm-hmm. and the edifying of the body. Uh, right. Okay. So um, first of all, the purpose of fortification Mm-hmm. is to equip uh, each other. Right. Okay, now when you think of that word equip, what, is, what does that bring to mind to you? That uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're going to equip something or equip somebody. What, what does that mean? I think about like training and having the right tools. Yeah. You know, helping to, helping to ready them for it. Right, right. So equipping, uh, look at the word a little bit differently, and that would be uh, preparing... Mm-hmm. for what's next yeah uh, to get you in a position to do really well with what's coming up next mm-hmm. and, we'll, and we'll talk about that uh, there is something coming up next that we all we all gonna face so he said you got to get ready for that um, right. and he says um, uh, one works of ministry mm-hmm. now this is this is very tricky and different than most people think um, when I say you're going to go do ministry, mm-hmm. people generally think I'm going to go do something at the church in some program for somebody. Right. Um, and I'll work at that and I'll try to be as helpful as I can. Uh, and I'm serving them. I'm going to serve them. Uh, isn't that a mm-hmm. good idea? Interesting enough. That's not what ministry is. Uh, it's different. It's the opposite. It winds up there, but it's the opposite. And it's this. If I'm ministering on behalf of God, mm-hmm. first, what's important for me to understand? I need to know what he's doing. Ah, what is he up to? What is his assignment? Mm-hmm. And, um, and he says, um, if, if I'm going to use you to equip others. Mm-hmm. And remember, this is the whole issue of the covenant. I'm blessing you to make you a blessing. If I'm going to equip others, what must be true of me? I have to be equipped. I have to be being equipped. Yeah. Uh, he says this isn't a hypocritical thing. This isn't tell people what they should do. 
Mm-hmm. That doesn't equip them at all because of the very nature of, of, of ministry. If I'm going to equip somebody else for ministry, mm-hmm. by definition, I've got to teach them to be in the same place I am, which is to hear from God and where would you like me to assist somebody? Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and it does translate into service. So there's, there's things where he can say, you know, I want you to, to uh, participate in this uh, uh, celebrate recovery ministry um, that you're going to bring people who are hurting and you're going to walk them through to learn how to live the covenant life. And they're, and they're, they're not even going to understand it at first because they're really hurting. They're really in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in order for you to do that, do you understand? <laughs> do you understand how it works? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't get, just make them feel better. It's get them connected to the process of listening and processing with me, because ministry is it is giving it away and it is serving others, but it's for the purpose of equipping them so that they can then do it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that means I gotta I gotta be in a position to listen and process with God. And then he says for edifying. The body. The word there is uh, build up and strengthen. We talked about fortification. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you to assist the strengthening of something else. So like, for example, in our retreats, uh, we, we edify the body. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that, that we, we do participate in, and, and we, we know that this is part of what we do, is um, strengthen marriages Mm-hmm. and strengthen singles to have good, solid inner circle to strengthen their, their soul, their life with God. It's going to edify them, build them up, strengthen them, uh, right. all by the direction of what, of what God gives me to do. Uh, so that uh, when we talk about fortification, what God has just said is, hey, guess what? That fortification is bigger than you. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it's you. But don't say I'm going to go strengthen myself now because I got a break. It's no interesting enough. He says do it in fellowship mm-hmm. with others, and as you participate with them and they assist with you, you all get strengthened. And it's important that the body functions together. So when you strengthen, one of the big elements of, of fortification is gather people with you and strengthen mm-hmm. together. So like when Asa did it or Nehemiah did it, they didn't do it individually, they did it as a community. Right. Uh, and, and build it up. That, as you're talking about this, so many threads are pulling together with this one um, situation. I think I've shared on here before, um, we have some dear friends um, from Brazil who have lived over here for several years now um, in ministry and have had this issue for the last several months of trying to get their green cards through and all of this. And um, and God brought all of us together to really come together and seek his will and seek next steps and pray over it. And it has been the most beautiful thing. It probably started, I'd say back in the end of May, beginning of June, that he really knit us together for this purpose. And, um, and along the way, every step he has given, you know, as we've continued to ask God and seek, um, there will be times, I mean, he just did all kinds of supernatural things and would give um, a word of encouragement from one person who is praying and a verse that he gave somebody else and then a supernatural vision that he gave somebody else. And it was all in such a way that it continued to build our faith. And I think about this couple in particular, they knew that the timing wasn't quite yet and that God had purpose in that. And they were trusting in that yet the word kept coming that this was going to be accomplished, that that God was doing this. And so they were standing on that belief, but it was beautiful to watch God use each individual person who was called in this fellowship to simply pray around this, to literally just when the faith was starting to get weak or, or you're starting to, does he really see me? It's still not there yet. God would insert some prophetic word or some encouragement or Um, a reminder that he's still working and a text saying, you know, this is now being processed and all these things. And along that journey, we have now finally, I got the uh, text this morning, um, the one person's had already been completed and we were still praying for his wife's to come through. And I got a celebratory text this morning that indeed hers is coming through, it's being processed. And in the sweetness of all of that, one of the things that we have all noticed, um, two things. 
One, just how God showed us that absolute perfect beauty of praying in community and how that builds each other's faith and how he literally fortified all of our belief in coming together in prayer and seeking him just simply by us doing it together. He fortified it in all of us. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is there was a bit of a beauty in the delay of that because in the process, you know, their whole family is in Brazil and they have church family here and, and wonderful friends. And so they all absolutely not discrediting any of that. But he did this thing that all of us, we were just together two days ago, they were over and we were all just laughing and we're like, this is family. I mean, we, we were we were just together and we're playing with the kids and having fun. And, and they were like, it's just so good to feel like when we're over here, we actually have family too. Right, and so right. he took all of that and built truly what felt like family for them in absence of them having physical family here and and edified and equipped and i think so much of this is being is going to be used for more things that he's up to so just fun to see it all in action right that's right that's beautiful um and the uh, you know and again it says here that um that the uh you know the purpose is to come to the unity of the faith and the experience of the son of god the life of god uh it's we're going to we're going to work each other strengthening is getting stronger in the ability to understand receive live out god's will Mm -hmm. through the unity of the spirit because we're not negotiating we're not saying isn't this a good idea it's rather let's go let's go confirm that that god has given you the wisdom and yes that's the step to take and yes this is the promise he's given you uh he says so that um you're no longer tossed to and fro by the trickery of men and the cunning cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting that it says the world's tricky Mm -hmm. Um, and it's easy to get deceived it's easy to miss truth it's easy to get captivated by things that just aren't of god he says you're going to help each other in a very 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 difficult place by strengthening your ability to continue to grow and grow and grow and be able to get ready for things that are going to come Mm -hmm. as well as know where to go when things do come is that you you know you go you go seek the the spirit's will and the spirit's is insight and wisdom you're going to get other people spouse friends inner circle to uh strengthen with you and while they're doing it with you and you're doing it with them guess what we are all being strengthened Absolutely. Uh, we're all being, Absolutely. being fortified. He said, so that you grow up into, into Christ mm-hmm. um, and that you're edifying itself in love, getting stronger. And he mm-hmm. said, there's, a, there's an interesting truth about that. He says, speak the truth in love, mm-hmm. um, which means that, uh, and this is really interesting about fortification, is I'm not, my goal isn't to have you feel better. It's mm-hmm. not to it's not to make you happy. It's to strengthen you in the truth of God because guess what? If you do, you will be happy. Right. Why? Well, because you'll be living in covenant. You'll be blessed to mm-hmm. be a blessing and the excitement of the life of God is there in my role as I participate in that with you is to speak truth, not in judgment, not in harshness mm-hmm. or you better you should. It's what if you're if you're saying like uh, I've had situations where um, uh, I had a, a guy a CEO that was uh, had a had a thought of I want to go do this and isn't that and God said you know and and but and I, and and because of who I am and by the way everybody's like this Father did you say that mm-hmm. and the answer is no and by the way it's it's against what I've already written in Scripture and Richard you kind of know that. Yeah, I kind right. of thought that, you know, so no, I haven't said it. Okay, I understand the truth. Would you like me to speak the truth to him? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that he doesn't go off and convince himself that this thing he's about ready to do, which is really against scripture, uh, is a good idea. Because right now that's what he thinks and he's convinced him it's even that I even said it. Mm. So I need you to speak the truth. And the key is, speak the truth in love 
right. uh, that I, I say, you know, I can't confirm that. And I'd really urge you to reconsider what you're about ready to do. And I think it's not of God. So I tell you what, here's some scripture. Why don't you go process it? Right. Let's go back and, and then we'll talk about it. And then I know that if you have a heart to get there, you'll see the truth. Uh, my role, and again, it's out of the point of fortification. I'm fortifying what God is doing with him. Mm-hmm. And my role isn't to judge him and or to tell him what he should do. It's rather to speak truth in love so that the goal is, are we all following God together? Right. And so when somebody says to me, hey, Rich, I'm not sure about that or I'm not confirmed about that. See, I don't look at it as, well, again, I don't want to hear from you. Uh, rather is thank you. Right. Um, you don't want a bunch of yes men. You want a bunch of people around you who are seeking God's best with you. I'm going to go and seek. And by the way, it doesn't mean that what you just said is correct or that is complete. Mm-hmm. But, well, what do I want to know? I want to know God's will. Mm-hmm. You have a heart to help me do that. And if something's there that I need to know, hallelujah, of course I do. And let me do that back to you. So that mm-hmm. the process, and it, it really ends this little section on fortification, is... Um, Interesting enough, when you're in this place of, of rest and things are, are going pretty well, he said fortify and then mm-hmm. continue to fortify. And guess what? Not about doing it alone. It's doing it in community. Mm-hmm. And you serve them and let them serve you. And then you start to learn that you can keep fortifying each other. Even when tough times come, you can actually keep strengthening each other because you'll lead them to the truth. Um, right. And you'll lead him to God in the covenant. So we'll uh, we'll uh, pick up more of this next time. But fortification is a big deal. Uh, he says uh, one of your responsibilities is to help fortify each other and be fortified, get strengthened up, get prepared, get equipped. Um, and then um, as we uh, go this next section, we're going to get specifically into as we're doing that, which is kind of a, a, a sequel to this, is how do I give this away? I'm called to give it away. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly what does that look like if I'm in the covenant? How do I help others to experience that too? And when we say give it away, the big question is, what are you talking about? Uh, right. Give it away. So we'll, we'll talk about that next, next uh, tomorrow, actually. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Great conversation. So if today's spurred questions for you, be sure to send them in at questions at afjministry.com. And we will be happy to address them. And um, as we continue to go on the covenant, I also just want to remind people as we're talking about these things, um, we were reminded in conversation with Bob and Carrie, um, if you guys got to listen to that podcast, um, just how useful the courses that are online are. And sometimes as we're getting through these topics, we, Rich and I are taking our time yeah. and just letting God lead the way. And we are, you know, taking it little by little. But if you can't wait to hear what's coming, <laughs> you can go online and take these courses and in, in a much shorter period of time, yeah. go ahead and start processing through and then come back and revisit it with us. So, yeah. you know, absolutely check out the website. There's some phenomenal resources of th- places you can go deeper if God is turning your heart to do that. Yeah. So. All right. Great. All right. Well, uh, We'll see you tomorrow, and we'll pick this up again with uh, How to Give It Away. Sounds great. Have a great afternoon. Okay, thanks. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments, and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.